Hello and welcome to episode zero. Um, fun fact, uh, if you add mods to an existing save file, it has the potential to break that save. And I added one mod after episode 10 slash 12, and that mod was supposed to fix the third person aim because I found out that there is such a thing and I installed it and everything worked wonderfully but I was only using one manual save file, the quick save and the auto saves for that playthrough because it's been so long since I played Skyrim that I forgot about that little drawback of modding so it uh, I saved the manual save after installing the mod and I played far enough in what would have been episode 11 that it overwrote all of the autosaves and I had quick saved once so every single save file had been saved with that mod installed. After that, anytime I tried to load any of those save files, it would crash the desktop, completely destroying the game, or the completely destroying that character, even after I uninstalled the mod. So what I did was I got the other third part or third person aim fix mod and uh, I will try to get a list of my mods. I don't have loot active. I know you're supposed to bad me might have helped with some of the problem but I can at least go through Vortex and say that these are the mods that I have activated in order and which ones they have uh, like which conflicts are being resolved in which order from them so that if anyone cares to they can create a similar uh, mods list for themselves. I say similar because I did copy and paste the plugins from my Skyrim folder into my Skyrim SE folder because I was informed that while the SSP and whatnot the the non plugin files that were loaded through never or through Nexus mod manager those files would not be compatible with SSE but the plugin files themselves would and they worked so some of the things I have installed on this character like Fenderix Magic Evolved has not been ported to SSE yet Fenderix Magic Evolved is part of this playthrough it works fine, all the spells function fine because I copied the plugins from Skyrim into SSE. But it's not in my Vortex load list because it's just a plugin in the folder. And I mention that because there may be other mods or other plugins that I have installed that I'm not thinking of because all of the mods that I've installed through Vortex also add plugins. So it's really hard for me to get an exact list of what plugins are manually added and which ones were carried over. That said, this is not so much a playthrough uh, video. It's going to be episode zero, uh, and that's going to be basically an alternative reality, a break in the timeline. Um, actually, it's only been a few minutes. I think I am going to run through the dungeon here of uh, the Helgen Keep. But first I wanted to mention this page that's been sitting on the screen this whole time. There is a mod that allows me to put up a journal. I can write in game. And so what I did was I wrote Volden's backstory. I brought it up in the last series, how he had been mistreated and so on. So I actually wrote his backstory starting in fourth era 191, the month of Rain's Hand, Rain's Hand on the 12th, because the 13th of Rain's Hand is his birthday, as he mentions in this journal entry. The 13th of Rain's Hand is a Breton holiday, the Day of the Dead. So he has been picked on for most of his life because he was born on the Day of the Dead. He has creepy black eyes with purple irises. He has pointy elven ears and pronounced cheekbones and a long thin face like an elf whereas most Bretons have a more human appearance so I'm only going to show the verse here you see I have 24 entries already written I'm only going to show the first one in this video but at the end of the videos moving forward uh, 
the videos after this one, I will show the next journal entry and then the next journal entry and the next journal entry until he catches up with where he is in Skyrim's story. And then I will start writing entries between videos to explain his experiences, uh, his viewpoint on what happened during the video you watched last. So say if this that I was recording was episode five, the journal entry at the end of episode five would be his take on what happened in episode four. If an episode is a two-parter, I might have it combined like episodes three and four and been be revealed in five, but that's how I plan to do the journal system so that you can get an idea of his mentality and personality and how that is different from myself as the player getting involved in the characters. He is still going to be an unarmored character, so I'm not equipping either of those. I'm not carrying this. Actually, I'm going to take it anyways, because I have a spell. I configured all of my mods in advance. You notice my elbow goes down. That's the cue for activating this. This is from Legacy of the Dragonborn. Legacy of the Dragonborn, if you go into your MCM menu and enable these spells, allows you to directly deposit items. And then later on, in Solitude, you can retrieve them. So until I get to Solitude, it won't do me any good. But while I'm waiting to get to Solitude, I will be able to. Uh, I'll be able to. Ooh, uh, let's put those away. Oh, geez, that takes a lot of magicka. Um, while I'm waiting to go to Solitude, I'll at least be able to pick up everything. Also, this one, instead of having the familiar, is going to use a sword. And not just any sword, he has a bound sword. swords uh, are stronger than regular swords and I did find if you don't loot this keep key he will and then he'll go open the door himself and I just loot all that nothing that I want to take off of them I did find a key so I'm pretty sure it's been a long time since I played a character that used bound weapons I'm pretty sure that using a, I don't want another copy of the key, uh, using a bound weapon will give you conjuration experience. I think I just picked up a ladle. But uh, there is um, sorry, reading things. I'm going to try and make this faster, just run through. Uh, you may notice my HUD I have health, magicka, and uh, stamina down in the lower left corner. I have a really small, um, a really small compass at the top of the screen. My other words, like what Rayloff is saying, is pretty small in the bottom of the screen. It's going to be really hard to read in YouTube unless you full screen it. So figured I should mention that. Um, but I reduced the size of things on screen so that people could focus more on the gameplay without absolutely eliminating the HUD. Ha. Voland is a little bit tougher this time around. You may have noticed. That's why I decided that this is, rather than just a break in the timeline, a completely alternative reality. Where He's a little more self-reliant. He's still going to, like I said, go fully unarmored, and he's still going to uh, aim at having conjured minions and so on, but at least I don't have to worry about him getting overweight from a lot of stuff, and I will eventually um, get a spell. I think I showed it in episode 9 of the previous series, or the previous installation of this series. I'm pretty sure I showed in episode 9 the um, summonable chest. Once I get that, I won't have to worry about sending things to solitude anymore. Oh, bad idea. 
Bad idea. Mage against conjured weapon. Um. <laughs> that was not supposed to be him. Uh, sorry, dude. Looks like there's something in this cage. All right. So, what I realized I did not um, explain in the last series, when it came to the uh, lock picking, was I mentioned how if you get it to the right point, you don't have. Oh, what is that? 25 health and magic are raised victims of blight cursed do mm, interesting equip that um, and this is why I have the spell that lets me deposit stuff but I didn't actually point out how to tell what the lock pick points are so they're different things like I'm gonna text test this one okay that one didn't move I never try opening it without moving it first. Or I always try opening it without moving. So that one just rattles there. So like this blue green thing on the right hand side, that is a noticeable point. The edge of this circle is a noticeable point. So is the edge of this circle and the center of that. If you look at the bottom edge of the lockpick, there's this like this scuff mark right here at the bottom edge of the lockpick. That's a point. This um, this little, uh, this dark spot in the middle of the light right there on the lower edge of the lockpick. That is a point. So since I know that it wasn't going anywhere from here and it's a low level lock, I can go to here and test it. It starts to move. You go about that range from that level lock and you will reach the beginning or roughly the middle if that's where it is. All right. I did also, um, because like I said, I configured all of my mods in advance, I did get Tomes of Power set up to begin with. So, read this, pulls me out, she's my weapon, and I did not start reading a book. Oh well. Stash Supplies is the ability from Legacy of the Dragonborn. If you draw your weapons, it ends the uh, animation when you are reading a book. Now. These allow you to pick out ingredients, but you cannot get weapons and armor from it. So if you put all these in there, you're not getting them back out until you go to solitude. And I don't have a problem with that. It's just money that I'll have available to me later that I wouldn't have if I just sat here not collecting it now. I'll, t I'll keep those on me for now. What? Oh, caps lock. I hit caps lock. I wonder if I was even overweight. Okay, nothing there. Try the top edge again. No. Try this edge. No. So from there, I go to the bottom edge of this one. And it's unlocked. Because I know the range to go by. And that's one of the points that you can go to. So knowing that if I go to that range in that area, it'll let me unlock it. Really reduces the amount of lock picks that you lose if you know your testing zones. Okay, so that's pretty tight, so I'm going to try this edge of that circle. I know there's some stuff left in here other than the coin purse over here. There has to be. Alright, nothing. Okay, so I know it's not going to be closer, which means if it's moving here, it's not going to be all the way at the bottom, which means it's probably going to be at this dark mark at the bottom of the lockpick right here. So I hope that little explanation on finding the uh, focus points, the sweet spots on the lock frame, I hope that helped a little more than last time. Just, you know, you gotta find the sweet spot and then you're good. 
that's how you actually find it. You learn those specific identifying marks. They are always there, regardless of what level of lock it is. Just give the general some time. Sorry, Rayloff. Yeesh. Shooting at me. Wish I could block, but, uh... Alright, he killed that dude. It's good that I have a bow. Um, I am planning on using a bow this time. Looked like that person had jewelry. So, um, I'm wearing something that increases my health, but because I'm a Breton, I start with the health and magicka down 10, so I'm going to do the same thing there that I did in the other video, where I get health and stamina to 100 and then work on magicka, because it just makes more sense that way. And last one... He also had a bow. Now I, oops, I think Ring of Virulence, 25 health and magicka increases the damage of poison bite and vile spores by two points per second. So these give you benefits, health and magicka, but they're also benefiting specific spells that I don't have. Well, I'm more likely to have that than the one that raises the dead anytime soon. So... Uh, explanations drug on a little bit long. But I think I'm going to make this first video slightly longer because I want to use it to demonstrate... Uh, I saw something while I was escaping Helga. I want to get that as the end of the video instead of just running to the uh, instead of just running to the outside, stopping, doing the second video, starting there. I'll end this one in Helgen, and then once I've gotten what I saw, I will end the video there and do the next video from that point on. This thing is really tough. Also, I hope to high heavens that it did not disease me. It didn't. Whew. Now, usually there's a third one. Oh. And there's the disease. I still suck at melee, but as you can see with this uh, bound weapon, I am a lot better than I was in the last series. If you watched the last series and didn't just skip to this episode. I see. Now, next up should be... Ooh, more zombies. Back up. <laughs> Stamina. Now, Conjuration. If I take this perk, Mystic Binding, my summoned weapons do more damage. And if I do this one, they Soul Trap. Forgotten Magic Phantom Shroud. That's a spell. Sweet. Makes sneaking to it. Nice. Now, I did not go into the animation. So I'm still only on the first one here. I did notice that this timer does not count down. So it's 12 hours from the time you got that ability. Next is favorite longbow, and this is to demonstrate the uh, third-person aim assist. As you can see, it didn't fly wide.
right in the face. Get some uh, benefit there. Yeah, yeah, I hate those things too. For the most part, I am going to focus on bound weapons. Uh, I do need, I believe, to get my conjuration high enough to be able to purchase the bound uh, bow. I don't think you can get it until you are, have like 60 or something in conjuration. But, okay. Wait up. Jerk. <laughs> Zambies! <laughs> oh, what was that? That looks like another forgotten magic spell. It is. It launches two missiles at the target, each causing 5% of your total magicka as fire, frost, or shock. Each missile drains 10% of your magicka. So, it takes 20% of my Magicka to do 10% of my Magicka in damage. I don't think there's anything up there. So let's, uh, let's try that one. Uh, da -da -da. Got sparks out of there, got phantom shadow and spectral missiles out of there. Equip that at the left. So... What does this do? Uh, she's not very happy with me. That's taking a lot of magicka. Because it's a percentage base. Oops. <laughs> I didn't even realize there was a uh, helmet there all this time. I don't know, years maybe, I didn't realize there was a helmet there. Not that I'm playing a heavy armor character and would use it, but interesting to know. Now, one of the things that I can do while I'm running along is things like Oak Flesh, just practice it, get my skill up some get my alteration up. I don't have the good spell from last time, that Ease Burden, that gives you so much experience for casting it. Oh yeah, this will be a nice video. So, if you subtract all the explanations, this is about a 20 minute video because I'm just going to turn around, run up hell, grab what I saw in Helgen, which I believe is from the Bound Armory Extravaganza mod. I believe that's what I saw up there. Because I've had it in the past, and it's conjuration books laying on the ground. Okay. Hello, Rayloff. Quick save just in case there's bandits. And... Do -do 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 -do. Run right up here. Rayloff can go do his own thing. I have had bandits in Helgen before, so that's why I'm... Saving first. Hate to have to run through the entire dungeon again. Now, what you have to do is you have to go down here to where you actually went into the tower. And right there, you have two books that you can't pick up because your hands are bound. Wood Axe and Pickaxe. So those will complete the spells I'm able to learn. And it seems like every time you learn a spell with this mod, it puts you back. What foolishness. One of those spell tomes. Uh, F9. Apparently one of those other spell tomes did count. Oh, sparks. Maybe. But something counted as a actual spell tome instead of a book. Yep, 
There he goes. Goodbye. Have fun. You go too. Now, I've had this happen before where I pick up Bound Pickaxe and I use it and I get Bound Axe. I've also had it happen before where I get Bound Pickaxe and I use it and I have a Bound Pickaxe. But either way, the spell says Bound Pickaxe. It's kind of a problem. So this time I'm just going to read Bound Pickaxe because that's the one that I really need. And that gives me Study Erudite. Study Erudite should be the one with six days and a 30% increase on skills. Ah, says I have 143 hours left. And now, if I happen to find a, uh, if I happen to find an ore vein, I can cast Bound Pickaxe instead of carrying a pickaxe on me. Because I believe it's the two up there that are specifically the pick and the woodcutter's axe as opposed to a uh, axe. So, since I have four minutes left, unless there's something really out of place, I should be able to make it to Riverwood and Magestone in that amount of time. Therefore, ending this episode at Riverwood instead of ending the first episode just outside of the cave, and then starting there for the second one. Is that a hunter? I get distracted so easily. She's hunting something. Ah, it's a bunny or a fox. So, I appear to have taken a slightly different path because of the uh, coming down from Helgen. So... Oh, look, a fox. I think you come down that path with Rayloff. Ha. Leather. <laughs> okay, that was hilarious. Okay. So I'm going to want Alteration, because that gives me Okada's Recital. Okada's Recital is free skill ups every time you get into combat. Right now I have Oak Flesh. Don't really feel like using Oak Flesh, but I might. Um, just because it would give me the free skill ups and it would give me the extra defense. Mage Stone is straight ahead. Yeah. Accept that sign. I have a little bit of time left on my sword, but not much. I should be able to kill and loot the bandit up here. Hey, buddy! Uh, should I have talked first? She didn't ask for parlay. Yeah, nice, nice. Lockpick, sweet. And is there anything in her cart? No. Wood chop him up. Okay. Get my sword back out. Okay. Definitely tougher than last time. This dude's actually gonna survive. I mean, you know, not permanently. Probably still get owned by Draugr patrols, but that's just until I get some new magic. And hey, I already got some new magic. I will not be able to use the percentage spell to kill them off because until I have like 400 magicka, I'm not going to be able to do enough damage to one-shot the Draugr or the Dragulf and stop them from killing me. I'll just run out of magicka first. Those things have a ton of health. I think they're like level 15 or 20. So, here we are in Riverwood. End of episode 1. Episode 2, I will do the uh, thing where I get the quest for the claw and 
get access to their house maybe do something here since I have some leather I might be able to craft some clothing or a hat or something like that but uh, since this is the first video and I showed the first journal entry at the beginning of it I won't be showing it the second journal entry now but you can expect at the end of the next video I will show the second journal entry which is a two-parter so thank you for sticking around sorry I had to restart uh, but I do have the third-party aim fix and about 30 more mods installed on this one than I did on the previous one. So you'll have a lot more to look at as I go through, such as Forgotten Magic and whatever gave me those two rings. So, thanks for watching, and stick around. Things are getting better.